Rightio, well, so here I am with uh, the great Dean Gardner, nine times Molokai champion, and who I'll say is the godfather of ocean paddling in Australia and possibly the world. Um, you know, he certainly, I remember in the early days, the late 90s, early 00s, Dean was running races. Not many people turn up, working his ass off. And, um, and, you know, you look at the sport now, and it's been a fair growth. You know, it's, um, and so, you know, well done for doing those hard yards. Oh, thanks. It wasn't just me, though. There's been a bunch of people that have uh, been there along the way. And, you know, I've, I've got a good group of people around me now. And, uh, you know, our, our company... Um, uh, you know, has is used to doing these things now, so it's, um, it's become a little bit easier, but it's still, you know, still a challenge. Still a bit of work, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, it's great to finally get an interview with you because uh, a couple of years ago you dodged me pretty well, and <laughs> so we've pinned you down. I think you know now you're part of the Shore and Partners teams. You know, you're towing the line, and it's good <laughs> to have a chat. So this is really, you know. This is, this is the really, the, you obviously have done this. How many times have you done the Molokai race? I'm not sure. It would be somewhere around 25 or 26 times. When was the first year? First year was 89. Yep. And um, that was a good year. I think from memory, Grant Kenny won that year. Okay. That was the last time he won it. Okay. And you've done it, and you've won it nine times? Yeah. Yep. So, um, hit record there. But you probably know how to pace yourself now and which way to go in the race and all of those things, which is certainly something you've got to learn. Um, you're doing doubles this year. Would yeah, you... well, I, I sort of realised that, um, you know, if I'm to get across that channel a little bit quicker, I can't do it by myself anymore. So, <laughs> And Trimmy had a bit of a shocker at the Surf Life Saving Nationals this year, so I felt sorry for him. So I thought I'd, with you know, with my lack of uh, paddling ability and his massive engine room in the back uh, and my experience out there we're hoping that uh, they all combine to one and get us across the channel pretty quick. Sounds good, sounds good. I certainly, I've you know, been in the sport for a while and I, I you know, have been for a few paddles with you and done a few races against you and I haven't seen anyone better downwind and I certainly have learned a lot. Even when you've come down to my local area and done a couple of paddles and watching the line you took, I, I've learned a lot about downwind. Has it just been something that you've just learned over the years? You know, uh, the more you've done the ocean paddling. Yeah, I, I, you know, people say that to me quite often, and um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honour, I guess, to be um, considered to be pretty good at that sort of thing. And for me, it's just been something that I have enjoyed, and it makes it, you know, if you enjoy something, it makes it easier to do. Yeah. Uh, the the paddling to me has always just been the the method of being able to catch runs, so um, paddling itself to me isn't something that I love to do, it's, it's paddling downwind that I love to do and uh, uh, you know paddling is just a byproduct of loving to paddle downwind, so um, yeah you know I was brought up in WA where we do tend to have good winds most afternoons in summer, so uh, I, I guess I learnt to, to do some downwind stuff over there. And uh, yeah, something I've always been attracted to. Yeah, yeah. I, so I think that's you know, it's it's the thing that most of us love in the sport doing downwind. And I think as we get older as well, it's you know, you know, if it was just paddling on the flat and smashing yourself all the time, I think a lot of us would disappear from the sport. But being able to do downwind keeps you in. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. You know, like look at the guys that are around doing the sport now, and um, you know we can keep doing this well into our 60s you know and it's quite a few guys in their 70s and yep. when you look at our age group categories in the events they're pushing right up into the 70s and they want they're now talking about putting an 80s category in and right. uh you know so it's it's just good that you know we can keep doing something you know i, th I think once you stop doing something then you're kind of waiting to die so um and, and, and if there's any sport you can do well into your later ages, then I, I think ocean paddling is one of them. Yeah, great. And you, you look at the sport, you've seen the evolution of the sport. One thing I really love about the sport, while there are people like us who've paddled since we were kids, so much in terms of the numbers of the sport of people who are new to paddling or newish to paddling, and they're all 35 plus, or so many of them are 35 plus, 40s. 50s, 60s, and like you said, 70s and over. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, and it's a good demographic for um, 
to be involved with, you know, the you, you people that have lived a bit of life, so they, they know know a few things, and um, you know they're not afraid to, to have a bit of a crack at different things, and they don't get they don't, they don't get stuck in in bubbles and uh, com, compartmentalised into one sort of section of paddle sports. Yep. They tend to branch it out and do a whole range of different things. So it's um yeah it's good, you know I, I love you know our, our training groups back in Sydney and. The, the trips that I run to Ningaloo and Noosa and those sorts of places, yeah. they're all fantastic, you know, it's just, just unreal people and you get to meet a, such a wide variety of people, yeah. you know, people that have taken only a couple of strokes to people that have been paddling for 20 or 30 years, so, um, yeah, I love that, I really love that side of the whole thing. Right. So with your goal, paddling doubles with a gun, Surski paddler has got plenty of speed and a great engine, what's your goal, is it lying on us? Um, I guess, yeah, you know, it was sort of, I've said to Corey that I'm out to get my record back <laughs> and uh, I can't do it by myself, so that's why I've enlisted Trimmy. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see, you know, like, um, there's a lot that happens over three hours, you know, and this is a three hour plus race, so um, even for me who's done plenty of these things, there's still, you know, I can still fall apart, and you know, Trimmy hasn't really done one of these before, so... Yep. It'll be new ground for him, so um, you know we'll see, we'll see how we combine and how we're looking during the course of the race, and, and just try and do the best we can to to catch runs. Obviously, on a double, you've got a bit more oomph in the boat, so you can you can catch runs that some of the singles might not be able to catch. Yep. And once the double's up and moving, it's got so much momentum that it tends to just keep ploughing through the little obstacle bumps that tend to show their face, show their self on the faces of the runs. So. Uh, which will be important if we can hold it together getting close to Port Lock where the water becomes quite um, confused then uh, we should hopefully be able to still catch the runs that a lot of singles will really struggle to catch. Yep, right, right. And so um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to finish with. If you could give, you know, for someone who's done the race so much and you know, experienced all the conditions, if you could give sort of, you know, your, say, maybe top three bits of advice for people doing the race in terms of... Okay, so for competitive people, um, cover your opposition. Um, for everyone, keep your destination in mind. That's the most important thing. Yep. Um, if you're brand new to this event, try and conserve as much as, as, as you can early and you utilise the runs as best you can. Don't hook too many left runs too early in the race. You might want to hold on, hold off on a couple of those and use the smaller runs to move to the right. Uh, don't listen to people about mysterious currents and things like that. It's uh, generally a straight line's the best line. Um, yeah, and you want, to, you want to have a bit of energy left when you when you're getting close to Port Lock Point. You know, in that last sort of 30 or 40 minutes. Because yep. that's where the water becomes tougher to catch the runs. So um, if you've got a little bit in the in the tank, then you can sort of charge through that stuff and get through the worst part of it. Great, thank you. And um, final one is advice on to whether, regardless of the standard, advice on um, how to paddle downwind. How to how do you, how do I become a better downwind paddler? Well, like I just mentioned, the most number one thing is your destination. Yep. So. If you constantly have your destination in mind, then um, you can do everything else you need to do after that. And, uh, you, you, you just start start thinking that anything's possible and the runs don't necessarily come from one direction. They can come from multiple directions and they can come from multiple directions at once. So um, as long as your, your destination's in mind, then uh, you can catch whatever you need to catch to roughly go in the, in the way that you need to go. And then the, the last thing is the shortest point between, the shortest line between two points is a straight one, so just try and keep it as straight as possible. Great. Thanks, Dean. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers.